At a Capitol press conference, Assemblymember Bill Monning showed how each 16-ounce bottle of soda has 16 teaspoons of sugar. That's how much goes in here. And it goes from the bottle into our children. And it has to be considered a public health risk, a public health epidemic, and we are poisoning our children. The average American consumption of soda per year is 50 gallons. That equals 39 pounds of sugar, consumption that is fueling the obesity crisis in the state. There is rock solid scientific evidence that soda and other sugar sweetened beverages are a huge and unique contributor to the childhood obesity epidemic. In California, 56% of adults are overweight or obese, and among children, the rate is 30%. The cost to the state, $21 billion a year in 2006. Assemblymember Monning says we're witnessing the perfect storm, a costly childhood obesity crisis driven by a 228% increase in soda consumption and looming budget cuts that would abandon programs protecting those children. This is the cause of a public health epidemic AB 669 is designed to reverse a public health epidemic and to restore health to our communities. It's not just soda that we're talking about today. I think most people know that soda is packed with sugar, but not everybody understands some of the flavored water, the Gatorade, the Red Bulls, which, by the way, are also caffeinated. And so there's an addictive issue here going on, too. These beverages not only contain sugar, but they're caffeinated, and so they're causing addiction with young people particularly. Assemblymember Monning's AB 669, the sweetened beverage tax bill, would raise $1.7 billion to fund childhood obesity prevention programs. The tax would impose a one penny per fluid ounce of added sweetener beverage as an excise tax. In other words, the manufacturer would pay that with the expectation that it would get passed off to the consumer. With the cost increase, the hope is to decrease consumption. Assemblymember Monning adds that if the current obesity trends are not reversed, half of all African American and Latino children and one out of every three Caucasian children born in the year 2000 will develop type 2 diabetes in their lifetime. This report was produced by the Speaker's Office of Member Services.